Hello again, it's Mr. Pete, your interweb shop teacher, and this is episode number 33B of my What Makes It Work series, and it's all regarding this Sears Craftsman Speed Converter, or Speed Reducer, I should say. Now, it's very important that you go back and watch 33A, and I'll flash that title on the screen right now, and then we'll get started. If you do not watch this video, you may not understand what this video is all about. Now part A was all about calculating or figuring what the actual reduction of this speed reducer is and I had the nameplate, the badge, covered up so that you couldn't cheat by looking in an old Sears catalog. But you know what? About half the people had the correct answer and showed their calculations and all that. And we'll get back to that in a minute. But taking the cover off, again, you can see what a beautiful piece of machinery this is. So let me take the rest of the clamshell cover off. And I hope to make a third part and actually install this on my Delta bandsaw to see if it will work and the saw will work as a metal cutting saw. So that's what this is all about. But right now we're going to go back into some old Sears catalogs and look at the catalog descriptions and the pricing and all of that. And I think you'll find this interesting. This will be a long video. Now it says patent pending here. I could not find the patent. I am very much questioning whether the patents were ever approved or that's just scare tactics to keep people from copying it. I do not always believe that when it says patent pending. This is page 14 of the 1966 Sears Tool Catalog and here it is. And it's on the page with the bandsaws here, and it was meant to be installed on this particular model, which is a 12-inch wood cutting saw, and the idea was to reduce it in speed so that a uh, metal cutting blade could put, be put on. Now I'm going to give you a close-up of this picture, which doesn't show you much, and the catalog description. So in 1966, there's the description and the price was $35 and notice that it is a 10 to 1 ratio. They rounded that off. We'll talk more about that later and that's why I didn't want you to see this advertisement or this catalog page. Okay, here it is. You can see they changed the color on it in 1966. I think mine is far older than that, probably from the 50s. I'm going to show you information on that momentarily. But that is how it is mounted, not really shown very well in the catalog. I don't think they sold very many because of the price. I found this picture on the interweb and it's under Google Books. And it's from a 1954 Popular Mechanics magazine. It's simply an advertisement. And this is probably when they introduced it in 1954. And there it is shown on one of their bandsaws. Now I'm going to show you another picture where it shows the price. So stand by. Okay, here it is again. It's just a close-up of the same picture. And notice that right below there is the price, $21.95. Now that was an awful lot of money and I will show you that in a few minutes here. And you could buy it for $2 down. Remember that $2 down was about two hours pay for many, many people in 1954. So it was very expensive. And here's the description in that advertisement. It's a far better description than what you'll find in the regular Sears catalog. And I don't know if you can read that or not, but I will put stills of many of these pictures at the very end of this video. So I hope you enjoy this. I took the liberty of making this little chart here regarding the prices again in 1954, $21.95. But adjusted for inflation, that was $242. Similarly, in 1966, it was $34.99, adjusted for inflation, that's $320. So you can see it was extremely expensive, and I think that is why there are not very, this is the first one that I've ever seen in my whole life. So they must be as rare as hen's teeth. And I'm so glad to have this one to show off and to use and talk about and all of that good stuff. Okay, the first video, part A, was all about 
the reduction here and the ratio between slow and high and many of you got it correctly we'll go over that again in a second here but of course the catalog description told you that it was a 10 to 1 ratio and we also could find a ratio simply by counting so looking at this pulley that's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten revolutions actually it's ten point two four so that's why they don't quite li line up but they rounded it off in the catalog so it's a ten to one ratio approximately so that's how you could do it without picking up a pencil and paper and more correctly it would be done by turning this pulley I was just trying to speed the video up and get my hands out of the way let me start here by telling you that I gave you some false information on purpose just to separate the men from the boys so I gave you the diameter of these pulleys and I gave you the number of teeth well the diameter has absolutely nothing to do with it it would mean a lot it means everything if we have a regular V belt and V pulley that, so that's how you would calculate it if these were not cog pulleys and I think I used the incorrect term I'm not all that familiar with cog pulleys I've really never worked with them before so the diameter meant nothing so there are 15 teeth on the small pulley and there are 48 teeth on the large pulley and same thing over here it's an identical setup on the other side and that's what it's all about and it would be the same as if we were calculating the speed or reduction of uh, sprockets with chains or with gears regular gears we would count the teeth so that's more or less no that's exactly what we're doing here again this means absolutely nothing this is what it's all about here are a few examples from the comments and there's almost 200 of these in the comments so read through that because these people that contributed here had some minorly different ways of expressing the formulas that they made up and it, it's really easy but read through some of this and let me show you just a few more on the bottom here's a few more pause your video to look through these because I'm not going to spend that much time talking about the formulas and how it is done but here's a sample of that very simply put here's the simplified formula the last step of the formula anyway and by the way Greg here that is the way it is spelled in the comments so he just took 48 over 15 times 48 over 15 and there's the answer it is 10.24 to 1 ratio he he should have put the ratio in there as well and Sears rounded it off to 10 to 1 because that wouldn't have meant much to people if they put that in the catalog now Dennis Ledbetter carried it out one step farther telling you what the final RPM is and the motor RPM is 1725 the reducer has two equal reductions the first reduction will drop the 1725 to 539 and the subsequent reduction will drop it to 168 rpm now he doesn't really show any of the formulas there but he has this spot on here's another real good one by Jan Franklin stop here's a real good one by John Franklin the way he explains it so these are great explanations everyone is just a little bit different but the final result is the same some people had it all wrong remember this is about eighth grade or freshman math but you have to understand a little bit about algebra and how to set up the equations but there are the correct answers remember that we have a double reduction here so again this is a 3.2 to one ratio here and a 3.2 to one ratio on the other side so since they are in series or compounded I'm not sure the correct term we have to multiply one of those results by the other and that's why we came up with 3.2 times 3.2 make any sense at all clear as mud it just occurred to me that I did not show you how to find the final output
output speed in RPM. So the motor is 1725, and then we have to divide that by the ratio, 10 to 1, but actually 10.24, and that is the final output speed in RPM. But we round it off to 168. For you engineers out there that probably know a heck of a lot more than me, why did they use a wider belt on this side than what they did here? The belts are the same other than the width, and there has to be a reason for that. Also, does the BR stand for Browning? Let me show you who actually manufactured this, if I can find the name. You know, Sears didn't make anything except maybe paint. There's a lot of die castings in this device, and molded right here on this pulley, it says Gilbert Engineering Company. Let's go over this one more time. The actual motor shaft would go in the hole here where I have this Delrin reducer plug that I made, and I'll put the drill on that. I think I did that in the last video. If we want the unit to be in direct drive for woodworking, the belt will go on this pulley, and that will give direct drive at motor speed of 1725. If we shift the belt to the other pulley, we are now reduced by 10.24 to 1 ratio for metalworking, which of course is one-tenth the speed of the motor. Okay, let's operate it. You can see the difference in speed between the two output pulleys here. This, of course, is the input. Pretty neat, you must admit. Sorry to disappoint you, but I'm not going to take the whole thing apart. I started to take it apart, and I realize there's a lot of press fits, and I don't want to ruin it. I don't think I can replace the belts or other parts, but there are a total of seven bearings. So there are two ball bearings here, or maybe they used a double row bearing, I'm not sure. Same thing here, there'd be two ball bearings, and in here. And the, someplace in the device, there is a needle bearing. I'm not sure where that is just yet. One of the reasons that I'm not going to take it apart is they did a cardinal sin here and they drove a roll pin into a blind hole. So that will never come out. So I didn't want to get into that, but I did go so far as to remove this snap ring and start to pull this pulley off and it just was so troublesome for the number of people that are going to watch this. I just said, I'm not going to mess with that. Some of you are wondering, how did they manage to get these two pulleys to run at different speeds? So that's probably more of a puzzle than anything. Okay, I got that pulley off, which was not particularly easy. But notice there are two set screws. One of them, this one, grips onto this shaft. That's a blind dimple or divot. The other one, right here, goes all the way through this coupling here, or whatever we're going to call it, and would fasten onto the motor shaft itself. That, that is, there has to be a flat on the motor shaft. There is no keyway. That's always a problem, as far as I'm concerned. But you can see that there is not uh, enough thickness there for a keyway. Now, look in there, and you can see another ball bearing that was not visible. So there's probably two in there. But when this shaft or coupling is driven, notice that it does not touch this pulley. It is fastened to this gear. So raise your hand if you're still with me. But I want to show you something else here. This is industrial archaeology, but someone has beat the heck out of this, and it wasn't me. And you're probably saying, oh, sure it wasn't. But also look here where that divot is, where somebody tried to tighten the screw down in the wrong spot. So someone has been in here before, and I got to tell you that it would be no easy job to change these belts. And that's if you can even still get these belts. Again, I think they're browning, but I'm making that up. And one other thing I discovered as I started to take this apart uh, last week, 
I did have the snap ring off, and then I thought that this little flange right here, that you see, I thought that was just a washer that would pop right off, was being held on by the snap, but no. So it's all a little more difficult to take apart than you think. I do not have a parts list. If anyone has a parts list or knows where to get one, shown me some pictures of that, I would appreciate that. But I have no intentions of taking this apart anymore. <laughs> I've already spent too much time on it. And I don't have much time left. I forgot to show you, but these are called torque arms. And these have to be used when we assemble this onto the bandsaw to keep the whole device from spinning. So I'll have to use that as well if I can fit it up to the bandsaw. Alright, you might remember that I had two of these Delta 14 inch bandsaws. Well, about three months ago I sold the other one. So I'm going to, in the next video, if there is one, attempt to fit that speed reducer onto this machine. And looking at it from the back side, and always unplug your machine when you do this, I have already removed that belt guard and this cover, and now you can see the motor, and I did look at the tag, it is 1725. Also I noticed it does not have a flat spot on it. It has a keyway, so that may be a problem fitting this up, I don't know yet. Also note that I marked the size of the pulley. The top pulley is six inches, which you can't see right now, and the other one is two and three quarters, I think, is what I have on it. Now, of course, I'll have to take this pulley off, remove the belt, take the pulley off, and then fasten this right onto the motor shaft. So there may be some other adjustments that I have to make in regards to the height of the motor or the position of the motor laterally, and so on. And again, that'll be in another video, if possible, and then even a follow-up video again on how to calculate the actual blade speed, because we're not really so interested in this. We want to know the number of feet per minute that the metal cutting blade travels, and we want it to be 100 or a little less. And I think maybe I'll make a quiz out of that as well, because quite a few people like a little challenge like that. So that may be the subject of another video, so do watch for that if you're interested in this type of thing. And of course I'll have the cover on this at that time. Now of course this pulley will have to be removed. I can't even slide this on right now because there's a key in the way. I may have to take the motor out of the, here and machine a flat on it or file a flat. I, I don't know. But go on like that with the cover. Hope you enjoy this very, very long video. There will be follow-up videos again on this if I can make it work and then another one on blade speeds. So watch for that. If you like my videos give me a thumbs up and keep watching. Tell your friends and remember that I made other videos on the same subject, probably about five of them, so I'll put a link down below to possibly to find some of those if anybody would be interested. Well, this is Mr. Pete on my painful knees, and I'll see you in the next video. So long for now.